Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's January 5th. There's a storm raging outside the window and it's time for the first batch of Deep Space updates for 2023. Yes, and we start on December 27th with a Long March 4B launching out of Taiyun in China, carrying a Gaofen 11 satellite into a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. That's about 57 degrees, slightly in retrograde. Now, this is the fourth Gaofen 11. Um, so the previous three, have been launched into similar orbits. We know it is an imaging satellite and not much more. December 28th, SpaceX began building out their Generation 2 Starlink constellation. Now, this was just, uh, you know, approved earlier in the month. But the Gen 2 launch of the Gen 2 hardware isn't actually available because that's supposed to be launched on Starlink. The, uh, sorry, Starship. The satellites are much larger. It appears that these are regular Starlink satellites, but being launched into a Gen 2 orbit. So this batch went into a 530 kilometer, 43 degree orbit. And so having lower inclinations means that there's gonna be more satellite at lower latitudes, which should help them serve their customers better. SpaceX also um, announced that they now have a million subscribers worldwide. So that's like $100 million a month, roughly, plus, you know, billion dollars a year. Uh, I'm sure at some point this might become profitable for them. 29th of December, there was a Long March 3B slash E uh, carrying a Xi'an 10-2 satellite. And honestly, don't know very much about it, but mysteriously, its orbit is highly eccentric it starts at or the perigee is about 200 kilometers apogee is about 40,000 kilometers we don't know where it went after that um 51 degree inclination so it's not really well targeted for geostationary orbit in fact i, I believe the departure burn didn't put it in the correct plane so don't know what that is, but that was another launch of the year. Falcon 9 on December 30th. There, This is an interesting one. This launched out of Vandenberg carrying an Eros 3C satellite for an Israeli image intelligence uh, customer, right? So this is the first properly retrograde. Now, there's been these retrograde orbits which are like 97 degrees, just slightly past 90 degrees. This was more like, you know, 150 or something it was much lower inclination because well <clears throat> yeah this is a very small satellite uh, the, and what we're told is it's part of a constellation and that the previous two uh like eros 3 1 and 2 have previously been launched but they are not named now if they've previously been launched and they've been launched out of israel then they have to launch into retrograde orbits so it would make sense if they're building a constellation that they're going to launch this new one into a retrograde orbit as well. This is where the bug, where they have to launch retrograde for political reasons, becomes the feature. Therefore, all future satellites in this constellation have to also do this. Um, when it's not officially reported as to which satellites are the other parts of the constellation, but Observers who looked at the satellite and look at imagery that's available suggest that this is the OFEC uh, 11 and 16, which were previously launched. Sorry, yeah, on on uh, Shavit rockets out of uh, out of Israel, obviously. Yeah, um, the, it was also an RTL LS, and it would have been really cool to see this, but of course, it was just terribly wet and rainy. And with that, SpaceX uh, basically made. 61 launches in 2023, beating Elon's, uh, you know, prediction that they would launch 60. And also, more importantly, tying a Soviet record from 1980 for launching 61 uh, or payloads into orbit using an R7-derived spacecraft booster, right? Now, <laughs> that's pretty impressive for a single tile of rocket. And obviously, that means that they're including Falcon Heavy in this. Also, the Soviet Union had three extra launches making 64, but they were unsuccessful. Whereas SpaceX has had a 100% success rate. It was a pretty big year for SpaceX, but more about that uh, in a minute. So the first launch of 2023 was another Falcon 9, a transporter mission, a ride share to sun synchronous orbit out of, uh, um, out of Florida. This carried 114 satellites in various locations. It, the booster returned to the launch site and the video they just released today shows a massive, amazing 
shot of this continuous view from the booster looking down. It's worth watching. So yeah, on, on this rocket, there were something like 100, so 36 flock satellites for Planet Labs, right? Uh, there was 12 Space B Swarm satellites. Now those are actually part of SpaceX now. They are like little quarter U uh, satellites that do internet of things around the world. Uh, there was like three different companies had space tugs that would carry smaller payloads. There was the Momentous Space Vigoride 5, Epic Aerospace Chimera LEO-1. There was a Skycraft, which had dispensed multiple uh, ADSB things. It's It was pretty... There was a launcher, SN-1, which uh, carried its own... Um, again, had its own ability to navigate. And uh, there was two deorbit ion CubeSat deployers named Glorious Gratia and Fierce Franciscus. All of these are basically, you know, the company pays for a slot on the transporter and then sublets or whatever sells their capacity to smaller satellites because no CubeSat provider has a way to bolt directly on. They have to basically buy space on someone else's. So this was, yeah, very cool way to start the year. There's a lot of spacecraft. It literally spent the whole day just like popping off new payloads and deploying stuff. This thing stayed in orbit for a very long time before finally deorbiting. So, um, yeah, coming back to 2022, want to talk about those numbers since we're here. As I said, 61 launches by the Falcon 9 does tie that Soviet record. Uh, China they launched 64 rockets in total with two failures. So China got 62 successful launches, which is only one more than SpaceX. But for the rest of the US, they only had like um, uh, 20, yeah, 26 rocket uh, launches by other providers. And that includes Rocket Lab, who, while they are an American company, they are launching from New Zealand. Uh, all the same, yeah, like SpaceX is definitely keeping the, the world, uh, keeping the US as the number one launch provider right now. And uh, it doesn't, Russia, of course, has managed to further sabotage its capabilities by with its uh, ridiculous, you know, attempt to expand its territory. Uh, that was really clearly the big space news of the year in many, many ways. Uh, Dmitry Rogozin starting out the year, you know, talking about his broomstick and ending up the year cosplaying in eastern Ukraine and getting his broomstick blown off. And uh, like, really, seriously, don't laugh. Don't like, like, seriously, there's a war, there's people dying, but like, it's bad karma to, you know, laugh at these things. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's hard not to. Like, I mean, Dmitry, you know. Anyway, uh, China. It completed its space station, or at least the main part of its space station. It still has a um, a telescope, which it's going to bring along. There were seven crewed launches to space over uh, the last year, carrying 24 astronauts. There was also three Blue Origin suborbital flights, carrying a total of 18 space tourists. Uh, yeah, other consequences of Russia's ridiculousness was uh, there's ExoMars didn't happen. Uh, Euclid is being moved to another one. OneWeb had to find new launch providers. Yeah, uh, out in space, recent news, we have a Soyuz MS-22. We still haven't come to a decision as to what exactly is going to happen to that crew. It's believed that it is flyable, but it's not guaranteed that it's going to be successful. So you've got to figure through all the different contingencies. They will make a decision on this at some point. It's possible that the crew spends another year in space since the you know, there's been a lot of experience with that. NASA, however, has apparently asked SpaceX, what are the capabilities of Dragon? Since it was originally pitched to be able to carry seven crew members, while it only has seats for four, they've been asked, is it possible for like three people to just sort of sit in the pickup bed and like chill there and hope that they survive? Now, Clearly, this isn't something that you would use in this kind of situation where you've got a long lead time and a lot of planning. But if the space station had a hole in it tomorrow, or say micro, another micrometeorite literally smashed the Soyuz, it was not returnable, and there's air leaking from the space station, they can't shut it down, they gotta leave. Is that a possibility? Um, I'm sure it wouldn't be comfortable, but it would be better than staying around. 
in the last week, we also had the the trailer. Remember the movie that Russia shot on the movie in 2021 with uh, Yulia per- Uh Yeah, they, they've released a trailer for it, showing uh, her, of course, floating around in Zero-G alongside the cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky, Anton Skeplarov, and Peter Dubarov. Um, while we've seen... It's possible that, uh, you know, NASA astronauts, particularly Mark Vander, he might have been in some of the shots. It's not really clear. They're certainly not on show in the trailer. They're certainly not getting any credit right now. Um, it's not clear if this movie will be released outside of Russia, given, you know, current uh, political issues. It'll be nice to see the Soyuz rocket launch in really nice high quality movie camera quality. Anyway. Um, NASA, they followed up with their announcement earlier in the year with uh, Polaris Dawn regarding reboosting Hubble and basically said that they're opening up the possibility of other industry partners performing the same task, uh, basically asking them to provide studies and suggestions with no guarantee of any money, like for even the study. I'm not sure anyone's going to take them up on that, but it does at least open up the prospects to other potential partners. Uh, speaking of partners, yes, Airbus has joined the Starlab conglomerate, that is uh, Voyager Space, you know, which is basically NanoRacks, and Lockheed Martin. They, this is their little private space station, which we saw previously. It won you know, commercial low LEO destination money. And it's notable, by the way, in the new renders that it no longer has this inflatable habitation module, but a solid habitation module. And if you just do a quick measurement, that's not going to fit on any rocket that I can think of right now. So it remains to be seen what the plan is. It might be something like a new Glen with a very specialized fairing designed for very wide payloads. Um, Iridium announced a few days ago that it has signed on with a smartphone supplier to uh, provide direct to cell phone service, similar to what Apple is doing with the iPhone 14 and Glo- Global Star. Most likely, given the smartphone space, it will be Samsung. And given that Iridium is probably more capable than Global Star right now, it's entirely likely it might launch with more two-way capabilities. But also, since Apple is investing in Global Star, it's entirely possible we get that capability going on. In an example of impeccable timing, uh, while we are experiencing this big storm on the Pacific West Coast, The satellite that covers this coast, GOES-17, has now been switched over to GOES-18, which is its replacement. GOES-17 had some problem with its infrared, and yeah, I just happened to catch the changeover in one of these animations I posted. Anyway, um, yeah, there's not been a great amount of space news, what with, you know, Christmas going on. But I do want to talk about what we have to look forward to this year. We have a Russia is returning to the moon with Luna 25, also known as Luna Glob. It's going to go be going to the South Pole uh, near Bogolvansky crater. OSIRIS-REx will be returning its samples. Psyche is going to launch, hopefully this time. Jupiter, icy moon's explorer. Juice is going to fly. Polaris Dawn bringing first civilian EVA. First crewed test of Starliner. Chandrayaan-3 going back to the moon. Maiden flights of Ariane 6. New Glenn, SpaceX's Starship. Um, JAXA's H3, ULA's Vulcan Centaur, ABL's RS-1, Relativity's Terran-1, Soyuz-5, we're going to get the first launch of Rocket Lab from the USA, the final launch of Antares-230+, and the debut of Dream Chaser on the second Vulcan launch, and we will, of course, be covering this in future Deep Space updates. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe!